Tactical Tuesdays are episodes to assist players in understanding a mechanic, tech card, or in general strategies that can help them improve their game. While some individuals may have the intuition in playing games, sometimes logic and overthinking can be what takes control. And for this Tactical Tuesday episode, I not only discuss advantages and disadvantages of mulligans, but briefly deck building as well. As always, if you enjoy these types of videos, do consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that notification bell for more future content. With mulligans being introduced into the Digimon trading card game, this is another factor of not just skill, but luck as well. Prior to the official addition of mulligans in the Digimon trading card game, Bandai tested a different variation of mulligans, where you set up security first, drew your hand, and if you didn't like your hand, you ship it to the bottom and draw a brand new hand without shuffling or changing up your security. This was one of the riskiest mulligans you ever faced as a player, because you might be bottom decking two level sixes out of the six you had, or maybe you were sending that one of that you needed for your specific matchup. Regardless, mulligans have changed now to a much more reasonable method. That is, you shuffle your deck, deal five cards out, and look at your hand. If your hand is satisfactory, then you place your security. However, if you are unsatisfied with your hand, you ship all the cards back to your deck, shuffle, deal five, and then place your security. This mulligan use is only one time. Unlike the previous mulligan, you got not just five cards worth of information, but ten. This way, you have zero knowledge of what could be or couldn't be in your security and what is at the bottom. However, math today will be my guide on how to describe to you the best ratios with examples, followed by an Excel table that will determine your chance of opening a specific card. While I could run through scenarios of whether you should mulligan or not, I do feel that every deck has its own win condition. Security Control, for example, does not care if it gets that level 3 on turn 1. Blue Flare decks run at most 10 level 3s, and only because they have floodgates. But generally, decks that build linearly in the raise desperately want to find at least one level 3 to start their climb to level 6. For this math, I will be focusing on a standard deck of 50 cards with X number of rookies, which, for this example, I'll be looking at the chance of you getting at least one of your 13 rookies to hand. You've shuffled your deck, and you've dealt out your five cards. The chance of you not getting a rookie on your first card is 50 minus 13, divided by 50, or 74%. The chance your second card is not a rookie is now 49 minus 13, divided by 49, or 73.5%. As you repeat this through your five cards, the chance of you not getting a single rookie in your hand is 20.6% as you multiply the occurrences together. Note that this means that all other possibilities would be a hand that has at least one rookie. 1, the 100%, minus 0 0.206, the 20.6%, equals 0 0.794, or 79.4% that your first hand will have a rookie. But what happens if you mulligan? In essence, you're repeating the number of failures twice. Therefore, if the chance of you not getting a rookie was 20.6%, you increased your chances of getting at least one rookie to 95.8% after you mulligan. Players love hovering in the 12 to 14 rookie range, which, based on the numbers, 12 rookie decks have a 76.3% showing at least one rookie in your opening hand to play with. 13 rookie decks have 79.4. And 14 rookies with an 82.2% chance. All of these numbers are based on your first hand, but when you mulligan, you increase your chances to 94.4%, 95.8%, and 96.8% respectively. So the ultimate question, is running a certain number of rookies that important? While this discussion does cover mulligans, I do want to also briefly cover deck building and in general why even a lower rookie count can be detrimental. From my Meta Monday list, I ran 14 level 3s to cover my bases for Digivolution Climb. But one consideration that players should also be careful of is playing them. Not all cards are made equal, and because of this, out of my 14 rookies, only 4 are non-searchers, meaning I don't just play them to search off the top for a hodgepodge of cards. Again, BT5 Agumon can find a Greymon and Omnimon Digimon and add it to hand among the top 3 cards. 
BT9 Agumon X can on play or when digivolving find a Greymon or Omnimon Digimon and the X antibody, and BT12 can find a Greymon or Omnimon Digimon and a Tamer with Tai Kamiya in its name. As you play these cards, you risk not only adding certain cards at times, but sending other Agumons, Tamers, and option cards as well. Which means, as you play these cards and send certain cards to the bottom, you may be decreasing your chances of drawing more rookies to climb up your chain later in the game. But now it's time to unveil the whole chart. I've made it so that if you run as few as 8 rookies, what are your chances of drawing at least one in your first hand, along with your chances after a mulligan? This goes all the way to 24 rookies, which is typical of even decks like D Reapers for Ultimate Cup. Hey, searches are basically rookies with the equivalent of them being play cost of 3. But while I have gone over your chances of drawing a level 3 Digimon on your first turn and after you mulligan, here's a bonus column of your 6th card if you decide to keep your hand if you're going 2nd and want to gamble it. Notice in with your standard 13 or 14 cards, your chances of drawing at least one level 3 goes up to 85.4% and 87.7% respectively if your hand holds almost the perfect sequence of a level 4, a level 4 that's a 1 of, a level 5, another X variant level 5, and a level 6. It's perfect. Almost perfect. But maybe your level 3s are all in the security. Maybe not. Let me know your thoughts on whether you foresee yourself risking certain hands, or if you're always going to mulligan for at least one level 3. As always, thank you so much for your support, and I will catch up with you on a what if topic tomorrow. This is Digipanda, logging out.